We're good to go. Recording now. We can pause it anytime. Um, knowledge on yours. And it will say, and it's good to go. The security setting is the one that made it. All right. All right. So I wanted to go over the differences between the systems as I see it, basically, and, and what it means to. Um, the law or embrace the law. So let me see how I got this working. All right. So entering the kingdom. Everybody see it? Everybody hear me? Uh, I saw Angela nod. <laughs> Angela, do you nod? It's probably you. Yeah, nodded. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. All right. I can see it here. Yeah. But I, it's just a little quiet because it's from the speaker. Speaker's rather than like the speakers. But she said yes. So it says the kingdom of God is within you. Your yeah. ultimate destiny to be restored to the kingdom. Now we're going to go in there. Now, quoting from the Zohar. Is that how you say it? That's Hebrew. Yeah, that's so hard. hard. So hard. So hard. <laughs> that's probably a, that's probably a hard. All, hard. All souls are subject to the trials of transmigration. Men do not know the designs of the Most High with regard to them. The souls must re enter the absolute substance from which they have emerged. But to accomplish this end, they must develop all the perfections the germ of which is planted in them. And if they have not fulfilled this condition during one life, they must commence another, a third and fourth until they have acquired the condition which fits them to reunion with God. So in the beginning, we were all connected to God and we became released or came apart from God. Now we must become perfect as what the gospel basically said. The kingdom can only be entered by fulfilling the natural law of entrance. Only those who are whole and complete can enter the kingdom. We're talking about the ultimate kingdom now, not the astral or anything. Get out of heaven. Huh? Not get out of heaven. <laughs> not, get out of heaven. <laughs> not even the way to heaven, but any of those. Those are like resting places between transitions. Not perfect love. Mm. Only those who are whole and complete, complete can enter the kingdom. The laws of nature and nature's God drives each soul to completion. That means it's your destiny. The laws of doing this for you. Make sure you become complete. You have eternity. Why the laws are because this is how the natural laws work. Yeah. But, since, but since you have to learn your own lessons. Allison, it's eight thirty my time. So. That's on. <laughs> You're gonna sit there watching it next to Zoom, man. No, no, that's not it. where I want to be. I'm just like, you'll be out of frame. Okay. Just that black chair. That black chair. Back to the wall, to the black. Okay. Allison is just joined her. If you can't see it, not a choice. <laughs> and now all those perfections is not a choice. Exactly. The laws will drive okay. you to perfection. It's called the Alpha and the Omega. So these are the laws that we're trying to put into so effect in the beginning of creation. All right, the divine mind, reading the mean dream there. Once we were particles of light, now we are beings of light. In the Alpha, all souls were as sparks of the divine mind. All souls began equal. Jesus, the soul that was Jesus, lived just like everybody else, was just as ignorant as everybody else. Me too, everybody. We were all the same. So wherever we are, we have no one to blame but ourselves. Got that Experiential knowledge did not exist, so we knew nothing. Each so that means also God did not know anything. 
Each soul generated personality is as a single neuron in the mind of the soul. Well, no, that's good. All right. I mean, to understand the cosmology of mind, you have to understand your relationship to God. Each soul is as a single neuron in the mind of, the, of God. Each soul generated personality, which each of us is, is as a single neuron in the mind of the soul. How many neurons does your mind have? Estimate. Trillions. So each soul has any number of neurons in, the, in its mind, and each God has an infinite number of neurons in the mind of God. But your higher, when we talk about higher soul self, we're talking about one neuron in the mind of God that's developed. And God is, God who is aware of all, everything that's out there is learning to us. Remember, in the Alpha, it was all nothing but ignorance. Each of us is growing the light of our soul through interactions with others. Oh, I also missed the skipped over there. Our soul has no race, no gender, and is not of the earth. So everything with, uh, that portrays us as having originated in the earth is a fraud and a lie. We, we were here before the earth was our soul. Soul development. Read in the mean first, every soul is in a different stage of evolution. The evolutionary gap between you and your loved ones can be thousands or millions of years in, in soul development. Trying to help others, humans, when a deeper truth can be like trying to teach a baby how to read books. So there's no way you can help those who are not prepared to be helped. Except you can't make what does it say? Others understand more than they are ready to receive. What you can do is focus on your spiritual growth and base, raise your vibration. Again, there we have that word of vibration that everybody's telling us we're full of shit. <laughs> I didn't make this, by the way. I'm not the great of all. So to that I wrote, Every person exists at a different level of soul evolution. Less evolved people cannot comprehend man's higher soul reality. The vast majority of Christians cannot understand the spiritual meaning of the gospel. Why? Because they're still immature. Religious leaders of churches have condemned the divine manners. Divine manners when you can tap into God or the divine mind and learn to be taught by it directly. But condemned it as, as blasphemy as yes. the devil's work. Yes, yes. Oh, so they can't understand it. And they also condemn spirituality. Or they look for a book, nothing more. It's in the book if that's what all it is. It's not that's not the that here. Yeah. Reincarnation. Spiritual DNA with this one. What comes naturally to you is what you have practiced over many lifetimes, each of us. Origin. Every soul comes into this world strengthened by the victories or weakened by the defeats of its previous life. Its place in this world is as a vessel appointed to honor or dishonor. It's determined by its previous merits or demerits. Its work in this world determines its place in the world which is to follow. So you're creating your next life. You're gonna be a handsome black man in the future, or just one of the rest of us. Just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> just keep going. <laughs> your spiritual DNA is a determining factor of what you can accomplish from life to life. Those who accomplish can comprehend greater things have accomplished much in their past. Self knowledge is limited by your soul's previous accomplishments. The knowledge you possess is in accord with your past accomplishments as a seeker. And doesn't work. Well, you can only build upon what you have accomplished in the past. Yeah. Of course, you're building, but you came into life different than everybody else. 
based upon what you've accomplished in the past. Like the new age is nothing matters, you know. They come in, they know everything. Sorry. Your soul family. I stuck this one in the last night in class. I've been up since midnight. Soul in front. Well, all right, let me read the meme first. Your soul family are those that are tuned into your frequency. There we have that word frequency again. <clears throat> you sense a strong connection beyond blood or race. You're connected by energy and vibration. That then vibration. <laughs> Through quantum sort communication, they initially intuitively answer your silent call and show up bringing unconditional love and support to the, in the perfect times. You share an unspoken level of understanding. To just get you and what you're about. So I wrote to that. Souls incarnate together. And this I know because I've seen it in, in looking into my own past lives. Making the group spiritually successful ensures your success in the future. That's important. What you do to help this soul group or soul family, because you'll be born again with that group in the future. What you do will help you in the end. Greatest spiritual growth is within a spiritual community. The community maintains spiritual standards of growth and development. <laughs> spiritual community. This is going back to when we were Ebonites. Emmanuel probably relate to that because he was there in the fourth century. I stuck this one in there too. Community elders know the soul being born into that community. They know who it is, spiritual. So there's nobody that can be born into this community unless they're part of that community, into a spiritual community. Elders know when soul, wife, and husband are born into that community. So when they determine who's going to be married to who, because they know the history of both the husband and wife. Elders are born to assist the community seekers. And together with certain souls over the course of lifetime. That I know because I've followed their lifetime in my in relation to my own. Spiritual development, mindset, and lifestyle. This is I took that this from uh, from the. Uh, uh, understanding of a near-death experience. Life review when you die. As we were talking about, weren't we? Uh, Noah? Yeah. Yesterday? Yeah, Examination man. of one's own life. You are the judge. There's no God and, and thing that is going to judge you. Because you have to deal with your failures. You feel your effects and when you're when you're feel when you're feeling this life review, you actually feel the effects you're having upon people in the review. You feel your effects of your words and actions to others. The law, as you do unto others, you will return back to you. Had I stuck in. Your own beliefs and actions are your only limitations. A soul family is all those personalities in the same spiritual DNA. Now. Soul family, all your soul past lives, all living to get living across the mention of time, and you're in you're intuitively you're connected to them, but you and you as you raise your own vibration, your own level of consciousness, you can begin to communicate with them. They are dependent upon you in this time of great opportunity. You come into life to the thing that you're going to accomplish something in this life. You're going to help your soul family, all those personalities that was born from your soul parents. You understand what the relationship I'm making of? All your past life personalities are within your particular soul family. You came into this life in this time of great opportunity to advance and to open the door for spiritual growth and development for all your your expressions of your soul, your unique personality. 
You're free. You will, uh, there are dependent upon you in this time of great opportunity. Will you are free and advance, will you free and advance your soul family? When you overcome, you're not only helping the other soul, the other people, but you're also helping your own soul family. Those attached to your soul who have been in the past and will be come in the future. So um, how does that relate to the uh, idea that there's no touch? So other personalities that were you said you know they're waiting on not waiting on but we have the opportunity to advance. So this it's the same thing, right? Like all all different um uh images that manifest will also have the same opportunity. Yes. Through you. Through you. Yeah, but then you're you work your you're, you're, you're advancing yeah. your soul personalities. Yeah, but what about the other soul? That works multiple ways around. Right? Yes, it does. Yes, you but so the, also, so the image that was born in a in a second century or eighteenth century or whatever, that's the same. The same the same thing stems to that image. Now I added this in there because of the Gospel of Thomas. Which I'll read the meme first, which of course, when you make the two one, and when you make the inner as the outer and the upper as the lower, and when you make the male and the female into a single one, so that the male shall not be male and the female shall not be female, then you will enter the kingdom. That's one of the major differences between the gospel teachings and the other teachings. Which is basically shock the gate meditation. All right, path of wholeness. Vast majority of spiritual paths seek upward into the highest spiritual centers. When I put shock the gates in the middle of Original gospel teachings convey the need to overcome the duality of the upper heavenly and lower earthly. Now let's look at Gurdjieff. I we did I quote this one yesterday? Yeah. Quoting a Spensky in his book, The Search for Miraculous. The third way is the way of the yogi. This is the way of knowledge, the way of mind. The way of the yogi consists in working on the third and fourth, third room and striving to center the fourth room by means of knowledge. The yogi, the yogi reaches the fourth room by developing his mind, but his body and emotions remain undeveloped. And like the faker and monk, he is unable to make any use of the result of his attainment. He knows everything but can do nothing. In order to begin to do, he must gain the mastery over his body and emotions. That's why if you su suppress the lower nature, like the yogi tried to do, you can't do, you have no power because you have not developed the lower centers. Now, think of this one. The upper is the other half of the lower. Now you got all this ideas up here, but you can't do anything with it. So that's what Gurdjieff awesome. basically observed. The back ear suppresses the body as their path. The monk suppresses the emotional and voluntary. So does the yogi. So does all so does all those not a badly engagement. I go ahead. The monk would expand the emotional. Like they, no, yeah. the monk they, sits they and meditates. Develop, it's devotional. It's a devotional or kind of emotional. Yeah. To God, but they're not engaging with the, the lower natures at all. Yeah. So they're saying, Gurdjieff is saying that that the Fakir is the one who has the body strength. Mm -hmm. The monk has the emotional strength, and the yogi yeah. has the yeah. Develop the mind by skipping over the rest. Yeah. Mm. That's why he calls it. So it was explained to me. I once asked in spirit, when I, they said, "Don't go. Don't stay away from that path. It's a valid path, but it's not for you." Mm. And I was told that the uh, that they cannot achieve the wholeness, and that's why Ger why Gurja left. And after 20 years, first he went to the yogis in India, then he went to the monks in, in uh, the village. He abandoned the boat because they didn't have 
key to wholeness, basically. Well, they don't really gain a balance strength of the body either, because they usually do like something like stand on one leg, which actually cripples the body. It creates one single strength in the body that they use in order to break through the block into the mind. But um, usually by the time they've done that, they've actually destroyed the balance function of the body. So they can't use that length that they create in any way that's useful. <laughs> Now, oh, like, they never ever get <laughs> always standing. Yeah. Every time they always have their arms like above your shoulder. Everyone's a little different, but yeah, yeah. They, they go pick something. Spiritualizing, let's wait for the clock to finish here. <laughs> Singing, of course. And that's why you're just called the fourth thing. Well, yeah. Well, he also was basically portrayed as teaching spiritual Christianity, especially when you look at the monopoly. What's the fourth room? I guess the level of consciousness that they're going. I don't know. I'm, I was never a student of his. Not just body, not just emotion, not it's just intellect. Yeah, not, not just one of our yeah, it's, 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 it's more like the house than the house. Uh, <laughs> scripture would be represented by the ten foundations of the house. So you can't, I wrote, you can't develop the lower earthly through suppression as the path of yogi or celibacy as in many systems. Spiritualizing lower sexual and emotional centers is through their proper use and the transformation that bring, brings wholeness. Soul self, what we call soul self in Sanskrit, is happening in the Hindu. And it's, if you take notice, it's very rarely ever mentioned because they never have any contact with the atma. That's not their focus. The focus is on chakra gazing knowledge, gaining, uh, gaining higher knowledge, which they do. But their, their, their word, what I portray as a soul self that does not exist in, I guess, Western religions because they've suppressed it for the soul, which they're not sure what it is. The Hindus will portray as the act. Crucial questions. Now let's go to the Gospel of Philip. When Eve was still with Adam, death did not exist. When she was separated from him, death came into being. If he enters again and attains his former self, death will be no more. Any opinion to that one, Noah? Can't die when you're in the kingdom. Well, you can't die when you have overcome the division of male and female. Mm. So, when you're born into this life, you're born into death. Yeah. Or at least spiritual <clears throat> death. So the idea that Jesus died for people's sins is actually not true. It's not actually true. Our children <laughs> are born, our children are born male or female. Then I ask the question, are they prepared to understand this reality of living in death in accord with the gospel of Philip? The Gospel of Philip says your children, who are male or female, are born into death. You, as a parent, though you're not a parent yet, should develop them so they can enter into life. So the Hebrew word for sacrifice, it just means to raise up. So it could be interpreted as death, but it's actually raised up. Now I ask the question, why was he, woman, drawn and separated from Adam? man. Why was the separation of male and female itself death? How is the oneness of Adam and Eve restored? The reference is not to sex or bearing a child. It's mental, spiritual joining, as in stated in the Gospel of Thomas. That was very important because that was removed from all the texts. Wow. 
Is woman man savior? If the foundation of the gospels and all of life are Genesis accounts of the Torah, how then is woman's man savior from a Christian perspective? In Hebrew, the two words that portray woman as help me are derived from the word either and whatever it is. Either, which commonly translated help, is rich is really a rich word with much deeper meaning. Quoting from a expert and a point of ripple scholar David Freeman, the Hebrew word translated the in English as help is either. The word is a combination of two groups meaning one means to rescue. So woman when she's portrayed as help me is sent to rescue men, to save. Another means to be strong. Just as the roots merge into one word, so did their meaning. At first, Isa was meant was meant to save or to be strong, but in time, the Freeman had always interpreted himself a mixture of both nuances. Dana Webb clarifies this by saying the noun Isa occurs 21 times in Hebrew in the Hebrew Bible. In eight of these instances, the word means savior. These examples are easy to identify because they're associated with other expressions of deliverance, of saving. So what they're saying. Woman should actually, instead of help me, should be portrayed as the savior of her husband. Yeah. Do we raise up? Then I ask some questions. Do we raise our daughters to be saviors of their husbands? Do we raise our sons to embrace their wives as their saviors? And I add, same sex relationship. I'm saying same sex relationship is not a sin. It's just squandering away the opportunity of life. That's why it's condemned in the scriptures. Actually, it's more of a sentence probably the judge. Jesus thought that we do unto others the same way we turn back to us. We fail to convey this reality to children. We fail as adults. So if you send off your children to learn transsexual and everything else into the public schools, you're actually depriving them of the opportunity to enter into life. And they chose you as the parent for some reason, for any reason. <laughs> Duality. I portray as God's spiritual schoolhouse. The soul incarnates as either a male or female because all growth and development is the interaction with opposites. That includes, all right, heavenly must interact with the earthly. Male must interact with the female, inner with the outer, and to bring about development to wholeness. Female is the other half of the male polarity. Death is the separation of male and female, being the fruit of duality. Wholeness of mind requires the oneness of male and female, heavenly and earthly, inner and outer, as in the new that where they both are expressions of the one. So, fully huh? being born into life. As being born into wholeness. You can't you know. experience in spirit. And your soul can't experience. That's why the feminine was separated from spirit. Yes. Right. So the feminine was removed so they could interact and grow. So they could know each other and experience will evolve. Yeah. Weakness of strengths of feminine intuitive. Woman has greater insight into the astral. And this is what you got to be careful. Astro surrounds the earth. We went over that right yesterday. Yeah, we talked about it. Insights into the after death states of existence. This is her strengths. Often associated with new age, medium, psychic, channeling, NBE, NBE, and OOB. That's a woman's power to be intuitive. But the inner journey, and, and that's why you see all the psychics and stuff in the new age. Inner journey requires wholeness, divine spiritual marriage union. In other words, for the woman to turn her intuitive abilities inward requires the balance of the male and female. Man, therefore, man saves woman from outward astral confusion. When I portray astral 
how we're asked to compute them to train basically the new age. And that's basically what it is. That's why in spirit they call referred to as Paul again. Power cause and all the rest. Paro prodigal son. Each person is the prodigal son who was lost in a far country. The highest soul self is portrayed as the son who remained in the father's kingdom. Part that remained with God. Remember, your soul is a single neuron in the mind of God. Your highest self is the is the portrayed as the elder son in the parable of the prodigal son. Living a riotous living where his inheritance, inheritance is squandered away on harlots, the prodigal son falls under the control of the citizen consciousness of this world. The prodigal son must return to turn under his own volition. The father cannot help him while he is lost in this world. Prayer without actions is gravely flawed. Transformation requires wholeness. The son must come to his senses and return to the kingdom on his own volition. You must seek the king. <laughs> A Gnostic perspective on the prodigal son. A Gnostic view you have more advanced ways of, of looking at things. A parallel modern witness is that of Philip K. Dick has stated in the 10 principles of Gnostic revelation, where it betrays the reality of the person you are in this world with your highest soul self, where he wrote, each of us has a divine counterpart unfold. Why is he unfolded? He's still with God, who can reach a hand down to us to awaken us. This other personality is the authentic waking self. A soul, our soul is real. We're an expression of the soul. Therefore, we don't have any genuineness. We are, in fact, asleep and in the hands of a dangerous magician disguised as a good god, which is the god of this world, the deranged created deity. The bleakness, the evil and pain in this world, the fact that it is a deterministic prison controlled by the demented creator causes us willingly to split with the reality principle every life so as to speak, willfully fall asleep and delude. And that's what you're dealing with with the people in this world. They fall asleep and delude. They make no real advance. That's from the, what they would call a Gnostic perspective. It can get extreme in some of that example. The God of conscience of this world is what the people worship is a demented creator that triggers us. The journey home is an inner journey to the core of your consciousness with your unfallen elder brother or soul son. Any questions, Noah? Usually come up with good ones. The demented creator. Mm -hmm. Look at the like world. Whole, like, look at look at the world. The, well, there people are creating. We're all creating what we have. Yes. yes. People's. Well, if they complain about the creation. But not the you to to turn it on yourself. I'm not the dude who betrays this world is bad. Evil. And not why the Gnostics? The Gnostic, because that's the way they've traditionally done. It. They scared people with the god of this world and everything else. Demiurge. Demiurge. That's a bit of evil. And, you know, they can... But they're learning the lessons. Prayer, like, like I said, prayer without action. But if they see that it's evil, they can take action to clean themselves up and create something not so evil. Now, let's do the same thing with Plato's Cave of Illusions. This subworld is a place where mankind only sees projected allegorical shadow images. Why? Because reality is a 12-dimensional reality. That's the reality of your higher soul stuff. This is a three-dimensional world where the genders are divided, the races are divided, everything is divided. And unless you want, you can bring them back together, you are divided. Because you only see a symbol of higher reality, you are dwelling in a shadow world that you are deceived to believe is real. Just don't you believe this world is real. It's very flat compared to twelve dimensional. Compared to five dimensions, it's it's a very flat yes. picture. Of it. But unless you're consciously aware of this, as you go forward, you'll become 
okay. part of it. Okay. Chain, when chain turned the within your own consciousness, the scriptures are an allegorical blueprint of your own mind. And that's why they were written to get out of this work. Used as a tool to connect to your inner source of consciousness. So going back to the that meme on the previous slide. Yeah. Is so here it represents that the light that's cast in the shadows is actually not even the real sun. It's just a it's a fire. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that so yeah. You don't even see shadows of reality. You're seeing, well, I mean, the, of the ultimate light. of the sun. You're, you're seeing shadows of a lesser light. Right. So they say that if, if some, when a prisoner escapes the cave, they enter into the higher world of their soul, they reject everything they see because they can't deal with it, consciously deal with it. Right. I was so just wondering if, the, if this portrayal was. Um, more accurate. I haven't read Plato's. That's what it, that's what it says in the cave. It does in Plato's. Yeah, it's how he describes it basically. Okay. Like you have the fire and the people in the cave, and you see the images made by the fire. Here it's saying that the people in control of, of they're making the yeah. There's a uh, uh, government. There's another. Well, they portray it if you look at the numbers, mind jail, in which reality is just a reflection of the dominant fear-based collective beliefs. Yeah. Two, fear-based collective belief system used by authorities, religions, politics, nationalism, etc. Primitive fear of scarcity, number three, is prim primitive fear of scarcity, 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 hostility, rejection of force to access to truth. Um, that's the, the representative of the fire, I think. Yeah. yeah. Four is discovery of the real self, discernment, death of ego. And I don't like that word death of ego, and I'll tell you why. It's a great stuff. It's more like the Hebrew. A it's sacrifice. It's a raising up. Sacrifice, sacrifice of ego. Yeah. The raising up of ego. I don't yeah. go agree with that at all. Sacrificing ego? Well, well no. no. Look at it. It's raising up. Building yeah. and perfecting the ego. That's it. Sacrifice. That can only be done by someone who builds and perfects the lower nature. Yeah. Instead of trying to escape Socrates. Yeah. Access to the truth and to consciousness, realization of the self, which is the evil up in there's a uh, there's a part six to that in Plato's longer description where somebody that went out there and saw the sun returned to the cave. We're getting to, that. to tell the stories yep. to the other prisoners. Okay. And they mad, those are called men uh, crucified yeah. him. <laughs> it's mad. Yeah. All right. Plato's allegory of the cave says you're in a prisoner and it's of your senses. According to Wikipedia on article on Plato's cave, like the fire that casts light on the walls of the cave, the human condition is forever bound to the impressions that are received through the senses. That's important. Your mind is only, and your whole consciousness is working through the senses. The next part, even if these impressions are absurd misrepresentations of reality, we cannot somehow break free of the human condition which is ever bound to the impressions that are received through the senses. From the bonds of our human condition. We cannot free ourselves from phenomenal state just as the prisoners could not free themselves from that chain. Now comes the next part. If, however, we were to miraculously escape our bondage, we would find a world that we could not understand. The sun is incomprehensible from someone who has never seen it. In other words, we would encounter another realm, a place incomprehensible because Theoretically, is the source of a higher reality that, than the one we have always known. It's the realm of pure form and pure fact. We've seen these shadow images that are cast into the floor, these three-dimensional shadow images, and we can't even relate to the source of those shadow images. Pure form? Reality. All dimensions. Using their words for and the formless. I'm using their words and working with their words. Okay. 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 Okay.
The key to the above statement is in the reality that the human condition is forever bound to the oppression to receive through the senses. Now, think of this. The linear mind of man only will accept what he sees as real. Science is based upon if you can't see it, it's not real. Can't measure it. Bullshit. So our whole culture is based upon Plato's case. Which means that so long as we believe this world is real, we will remain a prisoner of our own undeveloped mind and consciousness. Our true reality is one of pure form and fact. Not a whole culture. There's, there's lots of arguments against the determinist, the deterministic linear logical methodology. As long as it only what you see is real, you're sunk, you're different by it. Yeah, but like. You know, quantum experiments and whatnot. There's lots of arguments against that. that are That's called studio science by the vast majority. Society believes in a more deterministic way, even though individuals, what? individuals, <laughs> a lot of individuals believe that there's lots beyond that. But well, society's still, official narrative, even though they hold in high esteem the authors and writers that argue this deterministic logical um, so leftists, like Einstein, everybody knows. Oh, Einstein is a pretty clever guy, but and Einstein said he's not very clever. So. <laughs> he said, "What's his name?" Was he said, this the, he said, "This is the beginning." <laughs> and Einstein is so All right, now we'll, let's look at this one here. Right, this is the one I sent to the forum the other day. Frequency consciousness shift. Each person lives in a different world. By that, you are living in your own world and you're seeing a mirror image of your own mind that you're sharing with other people. Natural laws, 144,000 personalities that make up your consciousness. Women see differently than men. Each race sees differently. You draw on an allegorical world. Each person interprets the symbols differently. Spiritual DNA. Each person is born at different levels of development. The blind, re blind reject the seeing people. Scripture. Now I go into scriptural. Any questions from that? I I'm still. I've been curious for a while. I mean, 144,000. That's the 10 times 12 times 10 times 12 yes. times 10. So that many laws? No. That many personalities make up your consciousness. So the natural laws of your 144,000, 100,000 divisions. But that's important to understand is that when you're conceived, you're only <coughs> one, you're only one embryo. You are one of 144,000 possibilities on like different laws. The division. The cells divide the whole. Yeah, but also um, with 144,000, be that division as you grow older. Right, so like physically grow older and have that division across the spectrum of each, each segment of why each person well. sees differently. It's part of it's like describing the fractal of mind. So, so remember, you're you're in this this power, world. Times 10 to the power you're of you're evolved, you're the evolved through like differences matters. in the people. Mm -hmm. If the differences did not exist by law, you could not evolve in a man. Well, yeah. So you wouldn't have anything to interact with as a meaningful way. Now also you got the thing, not only is it 144,000, but you got 144,000 in the pattern, but each one is developed to a different level. Yeah. There's dumb ones, middle ones, and light ones. Scriptures must be turned. So the scriptures that tell you why, who would, what did he would believe the scriptures? There are that many dialogues. Like his, like his <laughs> historical linear facts. That's where I came from. <laughs> Scriptures must be turned within your own mind. Scriptures are actually an allegorical blueprint of your mind. It's a non-historical meaning. In the scripture, in the gospels, the cities are the spiritual centers or chakras of your of your mind. The 12 disciples are the 12 spheres of mind that's the life within your mind. Jesus is what you must become and behold. 
They don't receive this super well at Bible study. No, no they don't. <laughs> they would call this heresy. Both you experts in the law, for you have taken away the key of knowledge and did not enter in yourselves. Mm. And you hindered those who were entering. That's the teachings of this world. Church. Culture. Academia. The whole world. So I guess the Gnostics are right. The world is evil. Experts in the law. Those are the ones who study the, the scriptures. Like Christians study the scriptures. This is not yeah, yeah, talking about religious authorities on that one. About like scientific using employing the scientific method to explore natural laws, but then well, you could also it. portray them the same way. So one, gets it on, they're, one gets it either the results are twisted. Yeah. Either way, cannot but lead us into the development of mind and spirit. Christianity, I call the original cancel culture. <laughs> um, they canceled Jesus. Canceled. Um, do you know this one that's quoting St. Mark who has said it? What that's from? Is that supposed to be like. It's not Mark. No, that's uh, said it. Uh, yeah. Is it one of the. Uh, I guess not Mark. Mark. It might be, yes. I think it is Mark. Mark. I like that quote. Often we talk about that whole you read something, you have a book, or you, you go through you know, course or something, you go, oh man, if only this person was here and needed it. <laughs> but it's something that needs to be integrated to not bother. Well, you, if, you, if it means something to you, that means your count encounters in the past. So if you look at his. Um, garment there on the front. It has the cross the angles on it. Mm -hmm. well, I think that was the one from the uh, Nagramatic mm -hmm. Library. Basically. He's saying what does this science mean? The angles cross. Well, you see it in, in like the Greek Orthodox or other like European Orthodox, Russian Orthodox. Churches they'll have like something to be a double cross, and then they'll have the, the one that looks like a slant, so it's basically like a three dimensional cross. So oh, it's, so it looks it's yeah. not a real slant, it's a it's, a, it's like a three dimensional. Yeah, okay. So I decided also to, I guess that's a, a, a image of Plato. Those who are able to see beyond the shadows and lies of their culture will never be understood, let alone believed by the masses. So when people call me or somebody else, one of us a nutcase, and they're actually complimenting. Plato's analogy, a philosopher is defined as a person who escapes the cave and returns back to warn the other prisoners. When the philosopher attempts to tell the other prisoners about their own higher reality, they reject the philosopher as a madman. The first thing the prisoners do when exposed to his higher truth of their own higher reality to turn upon the killed philosopher. This is the cycle of initially, you know, they might encourage somebody to go, go try to jump out of the cage, and then if they succeed, they come back and crucify him. Yes. Which is a strange okay. so, and then they revere him again after the reality says you should have no teacher or leader. And they portray men who impersonate the true prophet within us as evil, which is the leaders of the churches, the leaders of the church, the government, and everyone else. Gospel rejects teachers, quoting, but you are not to be called rabbi. For you have one teacher, and you are all brothers. That means I'm your brother. Emmanuel is your brother. Yeah. Rick's ultimately your brother. Mm. But you're on your own. That's all. Stage in, uh, I don't know who. Stages of like psychology of the child's development that we studied, and that one always spoke to me. Um, it's just said like in teaching, teaching children to go. We could dive into the psychology one that 
The gospel also rejects leaders. Do not be called master either, because you have one master, the Messiah, the anointed. Teachers are judged more harshly. Those who teach this wisdom of this world. Not this was meant, of course written by James. Not many of you should become teachers because you know that we who teach will be judged more severely than others. In the homilies of Cat Clement, which Clement was Peter, the apostle Peter person who was a disciple who followed around him and, and authored and quoted his, uh, his teaching. The government of baptism is fatally polluted when the believer seeks out any teacher other than the true prophet within them, as seen in the words. But the ways in which this garment may be spotted are these. If anyone withdraw from God the Father and Creator of all, receiving another teacher besides Christ. So only the anointing within you should be your teacher. Your brothers are guides that can help you. But they're not What's a, uh, a false teacher? And like, how do people express Churches, that? Culture. Academia. When they worship, when they worship a book or something instead of an that's actual that's a false teacher. Uh, you know, people with um, pastors and people like that, or even you know. People that share wisdom in our modern day society. In church, they teach the Antichrist. In church, in literally, in the Hindu temple, they said the people never use. There's some that I think that use the, the deity on the pedal stool as a portal to the higher teacher, and some that probably just get caught up with the mm. plastic. Mm. <laughs> All right. St. Francis, an old friend of ours, preached the gospel at all times, but when necessary, use words. They like to pray without ceasing. Like, let your actions yeah. draw and perfect, help people find the way. Pray without ceasing. That's been a parable of the sower of seed. Know ye not this parable, and how then will ye know all parables? You don't know the parable of sowing and sowing the seed, you don't know nothing. That's probably two negatives. <laughs> Only those who thoroughly embrace the gospel teaching in word, thought, desire, and need are genuine believers and followers. There is no salvation by calling on the name of the Lord as churches promote. Development of growth by when it says in the parable of sower and seed that. The good ground, the crop grows 30, 60, and 100. Those are the, actually the levels of birth, the three levels of birth that you must achieve subsequent birth. 30, 60, and 100? 30, 60, and 100, yes. It's representative wow. of the first threefold birth, the sixfold birth, and the 100, and the wholeness. I know where you can find it in, your eye, in somebody's writing. Jesus would find good ground, and he. this is the definition. If anyone would come after me, he must deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. Luke, first day, and he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not carry his cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. The cross is a symbol of total and complete spiritual transformation. Now, we talked about the Apostle Peter. Let's look at the scriptures. In the homilies of Plymouth, the Apostle Peter quoted one. You may, I don't know whether you heard it or not. If you're not, you're not under Therefore, great care be taken that when the law of God is read, meaning those scriptures, it not be read according to the understanding of our own mind. For there are many sayings in the divine scriptures that can be drawn to that sense which everyone has preconceived for himself. And this ought not to be done, for you ought to not seek a foreign extraneous sense which you have brought from without, from the outside, from other people. 
If we ask the question, why can you set before you with his eyes and his the gospel teaching did not be read according to other people's interpretation or a church's interpretation? Therefore, great care be taken that when Lord God's read it not be read according to understand and stay in your own mind. You, your carnal consciousness, <coughs> does not understand the scriptures. Jesus taught there was only one source of truth, and the time must learn to direct it from the one teacher within you. So, then open he to understand and might understand the scriptures. In the gospel account of Jesus, he had to open their mind to the meaning of the scriptures. Now can then other people who are reading the scriptures, they don't understand it either. The mind, the mind wasn't a good ground. Mm -hmm. you, you can't read the scripture with, without with a good ground. With a, with a, with a, earthly mind or yeah, i mean you just read it wrongly you take it yes yeah it's just not related useful. to the things of this world shadow world look at it externally it's like book, of, book of morals and not even this can only be accomplished by becoming the good ground in the parable of the soul and the seed thus these words which are represented of the new covenant and the core gospel teachings are inconceivable to the mind Modern faith based believer who divide and disenfranchise from the very essence objective of the gospel teaching. Overwhelmed and anchored to a carnal mindset <laughs> that is of the outer darkness. Spiritually dis disenfranchised by individual man made opinions, factions, and sects which only end the belief in the truth of the king, which is this world. It's asking for total integration of opposites. Wholeness. Eve must be reunited to re and restored to Adam. Integration of man and woman is a great deal more than living together compatibly. One spouse must be part of an extension of self. The wife belongs to the husband, and the husband belongs to the wife. That's out of uh, that's kind of old fashioned, right, Noah? What? The idea today that the wife belongs to the husband and the husband belongs to the wife. Yeah. I give some examples of spiritual yeah. God. Go ahead. What was it? Today's woman objects to being controlled by her husband. I reject to ownership of anything. I mean, stewardship is a better word. I own flow. How, how do you become one? Yeah, man and woman, that's maybe the one exception. But like that's, in this world, you just do it every day. Yeah. <laughs> you can't become one without it. You own your body. It's you're stewarding resources. Do you own your body? Are you the steward of your body or do you own it? Are you totally responsible for it in every way? There's a lot your of body is your wife yeah. in another sense. Yeah. Do you own it? Do you have 100 percent responsibility for it? On the soul, soul having 100 percent responsibility. Yeah. I mean, unless you can control so, everything that takes place in your body, it's the same thing, isn't it? I how do you little control everything that takes little place? Little doesn't have a it doesn't yeah it doesn't have control like there's Still a lot of responsibility. Oh no, I mean I'm not saying it abdicates responsibility. I'm saying like. You don't have control of everything in your body. So it's like it's still ownership. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, exactly. You look at like if you own a car, you know, you might not be able to control every aspect of that car. But you're responsible. But you're responsible. I give some examples you of you how people. Your on you. I give some examples of that. responsible for one. <laughs> Did you know an orthodox view will not shake hands with other people? If the what what? An orthodox view will not shake hands with other people. Just the energetic exchange or something yes. they don't want to get because they don't want the energy. <laughs> well, they, yeah. A Hasidic Rebbe, Rebbe will not be in the presence of another woman without his wife. A Hasidic Rebbe will not touch a woman other than his wife. So purity. They don't want they don't want the energy exchange. 
in, in the way I think they call the Huna, they call it Akka. Whatever you touch, you connect it. Oh, there are the strings, the Akka strings. Are... Spiritual facts of life. Unless you understand the reality of pre existent soul that evolves to wholeness over the course of many lives, will make no progress in this or other lives. That's my opinion. This is Sophia. Let's look at how, how focused the people were. Which would do this would basically one of the a core Gnostic scripture and say, do not cease seeking day or night. Do not let yourselves relax until you have found all the mysteries of the kingdom of light, which will purify you and make you into pure light and lead you into the kingdom of light. Do you think a fetus, developing fetus in the womb of its mother takes breaks? Yeah. Every day is period of growth. Unless <laughs> unless you're a, you're a, you are a developing fetus. Well, in the womb of Mother Earth. And womb of Mother Earth. Yep. Unless you perpetually and continually develop your fail in this life. I, is it is it a choice? Like you said before, it's not a choice. It's, people make it a choice. What to, to just drop hang, out? Hang out. Drop out. Hang out. Go to the show. Do and whatever. Still, I mean, the long game though, they can't get out of it. They gotta somehow raise up at some point, <clears throat> or eventually. Event like it could be like, a long, long. This day. life might be told but it's still it's still not exactly a choice in the long game in the big picture. Oh, eventually it's going to come around. Wait, let's it's say <laughs> actually long, you should, we should be having a Zoom yeah. call every day. Well, we should be growing every day. Every day. Yeah. Zoom call is our community. That's what communities are for. Again, the piss is Sophia. Now, the Christians say all you need to do is lead a good life. This is Sophia wrote. But if he shall have sinned once, twice, or thrice, they shall reject that soul, sending it back into this world according to the form of the sin it may have committed. The form thereof will pass you later. Now, here's the most important. But verily, verily, I say to you that even the righteous man that has committed no sin at all. Yeah cannot be brought into the kingdom of light, for as much as the seal of the mysteries of the kingdom is not found upon Without the higher knowledge, it's impossible for you to attain this state of it. Once for all, I say to you, a soul cannot be brought into the kingdom of light without the mysteries of the kingdom of light. What is the kingdom of light? Your own higher soul self, a true self. Unless you become one with your higher soul self or working at daily, doing it, you yes. cannot be brought into that level of consciousness. So you just have a lot of legalistic, you know, you live a pure life because the book told you to or whatever. That's, you have that's, sin, that's, that's, that's no, just the beginning. That's not enough. Yeah. That, that's, no, that they, of course, will hold, will condemn that as heresy. Yeah. After all, Jesus makes us perfect. We don't have to do anything. Legalistic living. You have to believe. <laughs> I wrote to that. Living a good life does not equate to success. Unless you understand soul evolution over the course of many lives, you will lack the intellectual understanding to comprehend your own highest soul reality. Religion as taught in church is a detriment to fulfilling the teaching. Oh, you can't take that off. It's okay. I'm sorry. It's cold. Shut the fan off. Yeah. It's cool in here. Others, there's switch left. Oh. Yeah, it stops it from banging up the wall. Um, while we're waiting a second here, yes. I was just looking up, it did uh, bang up the that, wall. <laughs> um, first in St. Mark, the monk. Yeah. Um, so he was from the fifth century. Okay. And some of the 
writings that he has is in um, something called the Philokalia, which is a collection of writings from like the 5th to 15th century or 4th to 15th century. Um, yeah, 4th to 15th century. Yeah, this is different than the Philokalia of origin, it sounds like it's a different writing. But Philokalia means um, love of the Are you beautiful. coming back, Noah? Love of the beautiful. It's like, what are you whatever, doing? Like, philosophers love of the beautiful. Love of the beautiful. Love of the beautiful. Love of the beautiful. Love Apparently he was a, like sixty years in the desert, fasting and praying, fasting and praying, and writing books. All right. Unless you understand soul evolution of the course of many lives, you will lack the intellectual understanding to comprehend your own higher soul reality. You remain ignorant of self. Religion is taught in church is a detriment to the fulfillment of the gospel. Science is taught by academia is a detriment to the intellectual rent of your children. As you teach and rear your children, the same will be returned back to you. Success is often the easiest way of success to be born into a spiritual family. So that from the beginning, you're not part of the world. But if you don't create that for your children, and how do you expect it to come to you by osmosis in the future? You can only be born into a spiritual community if you become the community of training of your children. Our culture prepares us to be prisoners of play of the day. Yeah, the <laughs> reality of the child. Children are souls who have been placed in our care with the ability to heal our own rough friend. When we teach and raise children, we're actually working on ourselves. We're creating in the future. As we do with our children, the same will return back to us with respect to the healing of our own childhood and future incarnation. There's war raging between within as us as between our essence self and the false personalities that this world creates. All right. Go there. We're back again. Give us a second. The more the more teachers uh, did, you have in this world. What's the last thing everyone heard? Themselves. Yes. And which oh. will eventually yes. need to even though well like do you think it's ever a, just a one second the other computer is connecting. The part about the uh, what you do to your children it'll be done back to you. Okay. It can be a net positive overall. Uh, just give us a second the other computer is connection so with, with the um PowerPoint. What's going on at the time. You're on those yeah, no stringent hard rules, but hard rules. But that's often the way is you create another vision so you can come to a more understanding. Can we get it back? Uh, if yours is just loading up here. here this one's back in place. All right, I think you're on. Um, I think we gotta do the share screen on this one. Yeah, you gotta do share your screen. Rick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use it. Just hit share in the bottom right. Just hit share. It's already on it. Just hit share in the bottom right hand side. Oh, yeah, I see. Wait. Just hit share. Yeah, just hit share. And then you're good. And then, you're good. Oh, then go up to more. Here. Let me talk. Oh, okay. It's the pivot itself. So minimize your. Uh,
should be back in business. Uh, when you finish the last one, the last slide. Oh, yeah, we got to go back. Whoa, space. There we go. There we go. All right. Very much. So you're, you're actually working on not only yourself with your children, but also your future. As you do unto others, the same will be returned back to you. So if you create a proper lifestyle for your children to succeed spiritually, then you can receive the same in the future. Uh, let's go down. Our success is the result of evolving our essence self to wholeness and completion. Instead of suppression, all right, here we go. Instead of the suppression of the ego, we must transform the ego and build upon it a consecrated living temple. I totally reject the idea of suppressing the ego. Build it, develop it, grow it. It'll pop out and become a benefactor. Denying self, the ever night poor one, is to detach from the thinking and lifestyle of this world. They're not poor, as of what the Bible would say they're poor, or thinking monetary. They're poor to the ways and thinking of this world. What's the matter? I, 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 so the rich man that can't get into heaven as much as a the person of this in, world cannot get into heaven. Since he's rich of world the thoughts. ways and thinking of this world. Right. Some people are born to be rich monetarily. I believe Trump was born to be rich so he could tear up the political scheme of the world. And we have not been born rich. And developed in the way he was, he would not have been able to do the job he met into this life to do. Mm -hmm. So it's not so much uh, wealth, but sometimes wealth is given us because we need the wealth. But the uh, power to change. Thing, thing. Hmm? That's how you're thinking stuff by this world. Yeah. Boom. Oh. Press teachings. Now, we said that the, I guess the top one is the Gospel of Thomas. <laughs> now, the next one is from the Gospel of Nazarene. And one said to him, Teacher, when shall the kingdom come? And he answered and said, When that which is without shall be as that which is within. And that which is within shall be as that which is without. And the male and the female, neither male nor female, but the one in two. They who have ears to hear, let him hear. What is one in two? Can you be one if you don't own your wife and if your wife does not own you? It's union. <laughs> Not talking about a, a you know, a, a casual union here. We're talking about really you union. are living for her and that's she is what, living for you. Yeah. And that's what they're talking about. Ownership is coming first. That's too old fashioned religion, probably. And again, the 69th chapter of the Gospel of Nazarene just states, as one of the disciples asked him, How shall man enter the kingdom? And he answered and said, if you don't make the below as the above and the left as the right and the behind as the before, entering into the center and passing into spirit shall not enter the kingdom of God. That's the only place left where it talks about entering into the center. And then to enter the center requires balance and holiness. Gospel of the Egyptians, we see the similar one there. When Solomon asked when she would know the answer to her questions, the Lord said to her, when you trample on the robe of shame, and when the two shall be one, the male with the female, and there be neither male nor female. Epistle, now, the Epistle of Clement is very interesting because it was written in the first century. Clement was the disciple of Peter. And he was writing to a church. 
second epistle of Clement, where he writes, Let us expect therefore, hour by hour, the kingdom of God in love and righteousness, since we know not the day of its appearing. Now the, the important part is the Lord himself being asked by one when his kingdom would come, replied, when two shall be one, that which is without as that which is within, and when the male and female need the male and the female. So this whole idea, they suppress that teaching in order to put the king coming to terms with himself. So that's difficult to bring about. That takes a madman. That was an actual quotation from the a first century epistle written to first century Christians. That's called the second epistle of Clement. Now, that teaching could not be written today to a modern Christian congregation. Um, so the fact would be rejected as heresy. All of the gospel teachings have been rejected as heresy by the church. Human condition. You are a prisoner of Plato's cave of illusions that are, allu that are allusions or symbols of higher reality. Everybody understand what the where meaning allusions are. What you see has a meaning. Our country is a parable of the prodigal son. What you see with your physical eyes is portrayed as an allegorical shadow image. And I give this one here. This one gets personal. From this esoteric perspective, childbirth is not the purpose of sex, but is a byproduct or symbol and an allegorical portrayal of the need for your own birth through interaction of male and female. You understand childbirth, physical childbirth, then is a symbol of real childbirth, and you have to become part of you have to become the childbirth, because you have to become a child of the kingdom. Which means that few people have any realistic understand their own sexual nature. Higher soul sex, your own higher soul reality is portrayed as incomprehensible to your organic consciousness. Your soul or true self will continue to incarnate into these lives in order to grow the life of the soul. You remain a prisoner, life after life after life, until you are resolved to limitations. Shackle you to the human condition. Gospel of Philip reads A Gentile does not die, for he has never lived in order that he may die. And says a Gentile means non Israel, spiritual Israel. He who has believed in the truth has found life, and this one is in danger of dying if he, or he is alive. Gospel of Philip again Those who say they first. They, first they die, shall die, and then they are, are raised, are confused. He's talking about, of course, people like the Christians who believe that they, when they die, they're going to get resurrected. If they do not first receive the resurrection while they live, they will not receive anything when they die. Your faith will continue to imprison your soul family in the future lives of suffering. You may become the savior of your own soul family, origin. Quoting, the soul has neither beginning nor end. Every soul comes into this world strengthened by the victories or weakened by the defeats of its previous life. Its place in this world is a vessel appointed to honor or dishonor, determined by its previous merits and demerits. Its work in this world determines which its place in the world is to follow. That's why it's uh, important. Not squander the failure of a week. You can squander, you know, it's important not to squander. Not just squander, but like weaken the soul self yes. in the long run as well. Uh, Everyone you interact with is a continuation of past interaction without exception. Reincarnation itself, as in the Eastern belief, is a flawed belief. You want to let uh, the clock sing? Or... Yeah. <laughs> it's important to understand why reincarnation from the Eastern perspective is flawed. No such thing. You will never reincarnate. 
the easterners portray you as jumping from body to body. That can't happen. Your personality has to return to the source of the soul. Your soul will generate another personality in another life which is working upon your accomplishments and all the accomplishments that soul has accomplished. Your personality is unique and will never reincarnate. it. Your personality will only live one life and you must eventually return to your soul source and have infinity to return. This is what we're talking about too. About infinity to get back to your soul. Some people remain in hell or whatever they're doing. Or what do we call the, the Christian heaven or ghetto heaven? Ghetto heaven. So they can remain stuck there. And from the experience of being in a ghetto heaven, your soul, future soul generator personality will learn not to fall into that trap. Gospel Thomas saying, this is the biggie to understand. Well, let the thing finish saying in song to us. <laughs> Jesus said, and this is the only teaching that exists today that I know that conveys this properly. And you know, there's a, there was a song in the 90s called Get Ahead. Get Ahead. <laughs> When you see your likeness, you rejoice. But when you see your images, which came into being before you, and which never die, nor become manifest, what does that mean? Those past images. They never become manifest? They never fulfill becoming at one. They never complete oh. the cycle of that oneness and manifest. You're trying to become manifest. You're trying to become yeah. the true self in the world. All of them were failures. All the images that came before you. P pieces of the puzzle. I mean, they, they yes, they are. But like, we build up. We, we build success upon our failures. Exactly. But it depends upon the nature of those failures. So you're not always stoked about them, and some of them you are. I mean, Bruce Lee has a quote where it's like. Do not fear failure, yeah. not failure, but low aim is to try and, and then glorious attempts. I agree with Bruce and, Lee. And great attempts, it's glorious to even fail. I agree with him. Future incarnation will be as spiritual children that you're have, have the connection to because you were before them. Your complacency in this life of great opportunity will inflict suffering upon your spiritual children. And the rest of your soul, family. Spiritual DNA. In the same way that the Easterns teach reincarnation, because there's no way to logically explain how the soul incarnates unique expressions. When they use the term Akashic Record, they envision that there's this great book someplace where history is written. That does not exist either. Time is dynamic. Which means that on one level, your soul is living all the lives that has ever lived simultaneously. <laughs> and it can be accessed. The soul writes the mystic Saint Teresa. This is as a castle made of a single diamond, in which there are many rooms. Just as in heaven, there are many mansions. And I also quote the origin there. Which means all the soul, all the unique expressions of the soul have to return back to the soul. They do not incarnate in the future lives. Yes. Hello, can I ask you a question? Sure. That's what so, we're here. Okay. So um, I know that you say, um, you know, a lot of sort of psychics and people that use the astral realm are like parlor games. Um, but um, there's, a, you know, often people talk about when they have near-death experience or whatever about the uh, uh, Akashic records yeah. or 
um, be well, that's what that. that's what that's a term they can understand. Oh, they just the use that term. Okay. To explain something. Okay. You, it's too much to teach them that you're living time dynamically okay. and all the past life personalities. But you're just trying to get the get to where you survive death. Okay. So it's just experience. language to make it easier mm -hmm. to yes. understand. Okay. Same thing as reincarnation. Oh, you're going to live some future life. You're not. Well, it's language based on people's understanding. Yeah, language based on people's understanding. Okay. But, and but, then, but, but there's one other thing to that as well, because when people have near death experiences, very often they'll say, I learned all these things, but I couldn't contain them when they come back. Yeah, it's like and so it gets memory. consolidated to these like terms and things like that. Okay. Right. And then another thing I wanted to ask is um, yeah. some people, um, psychics, will tell people about their, their past lives. So they don't embrace somebody. They look at them and they, <coughs> they tell them about their past lives. What do you think of that? Now, they, 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 the other poor person tells them about? Yeah, I've, I've heard from a lot of people, they, they don't see somebody. So this person doesn't regress them. So they don't personally... That's a medium or a yeah, psychic. Yeah, yeah. Psychic. Sometimes they're right. Sometimes it's their interpretation. Okay, of your so you past think lives. sometimes they can see something? Yes, they can. Okay. Other times you, you, you that's what they call fall, that's rubbish. what they call fall again. Yeah. Mediums sell their services all the time. Mm -hmm. And people get dependent on it. You know, if, if they tell them something that makes them comfortable, then they would keep going back and spending money to hear more. <laughs> Yeah, the, uh, on that. what they call the, the fourth cast, the what? horoscope, right? No, no, I'm talking about people that go Psychics to and medium mediums and, and, look, and they will tell are, are them they the their previous lives. Are they the same kind of people that say you need to do all of this right now because it's like your horoscope? Um, I don't think so. I think those are people that Those are astrologers. Astrologers, they study the stars and the movement of, of energy and so on. It's different. People it's, it's find truth in all category. areas of life at their level. Okay. This, is, this is where, this is a continuation. This is, this is what I explained before. Your soul is a single neuron in the mind of God. You are a single neuron in the mind of your soul. Your soul sees all things as they really are. Your soul knows the thoughts of every person you encounter. Your intuition or innocent looking attributes of mind must be developed in order to access your soul. A wife in a spiritual marriage has the ability to be a surrogate for her husband's suppressed feminine attributes of mind. What does that mean? That we have suppressed aspects of mind when we incarnate. You are X, genetically XY, but the genitive power is so strong in you that you can't develop the feminine. You can't develop the X factor. But when you take on a spouse and you build that relationship, your wife becomes a surrogate for your suppressed ex, and you develop through her. That's why Eve is a helpmate or a savior of Adam. What's the word? Easier. Yeah. Easier. Yeah. Easier. Easier. In the words of Lord, <laughs> Nathan, guy, if, if, if the higher self was so easy to hear, we'll quote Gordanio Bruno, the divine light is always in man, presenting itself to the senses and to the comprehension, but man rejects it, sticking always in man. Because he's so consumed through his senses and the outer world that he, he never opens a relationship with his inner self. All higher development must come from inward development and learning. Equality of souls. I, this was an interesting meme that I had copied. The church. church rulership meme. The relationship with Jesus' soul to the people mind mirrors that a relationship with an abusive partner. So they're selling, they're peddling an abusive partner in the church. The same mental tricks are used. 
You're nothing without me. You're nothing without Jesus. You aren't worthy of my love. You have nothing without Jesus. You need me to be whole. I can save you. Only I know what you need. You must submit to me. If you leave me there, you will have hell to pay. The author of this then says, it's a scam, an obvious one to think to a thinking mind. Then I write to that, no soul or child offspring of God is better than others. Constantine, the words of God were corrupted to create the, in, in, the incarnate of Jesus God. You understand that, right? Which is like that. <clears throat> the actual, they went in and changed, changed the actual words of the scripture. And it's very easy to interpret in that kind of <laughs> needy exactly. relationship yes. way as it's written. You know? <laughs> All right, in Protestantism, which is another grave error, Luther's Reformation eliminated all growth and development. This is quoting basically Protestantism. Dogma, salvation by grace without actions, which they derived out of Paul. You must believe in salvation by grace alone, and that salvation is immediate and eternal <coughs> upon acceptance of Jesus as a one time sacrifice for your sins and is not obtained through works, sacraments, traditions, or merits of your own. And if you tell them you have to do one time, Flo told the preacher's wife that she was vegetarian for her religion. But Upon as a heretic because you all you have to do is believe, accept, and what merits believe in salvation, right? Of do anything, right? Or why would you be a vegetarian? That brave baby Jesus, so why not just sin as much as you want? The last time they did slightly sin, be strong, <laughs> <Slightly laughs> then your faith be stronger. <laughs> Yeah, that was but that goes flies in the face of James. You know, well, James yeah. was a straw of pistol. All souls have the same destiny. I mean, there's a lot that contradicts that in their scripture. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Yes. That doesn't matter. matter. No. no. Because it's Pauline. Well, how do they value that against the other? Because they only read what they want to read. They reject. What does what is that famous prophet? Um, Simon and Garfunkel say, man, he is what he wants to hear and disregard the rest. So, there you have it. It was on the last slide, too. Just man rejects. Like, I mean, Giordano Bruno was a good example. You know, he had some things and they burned and had no stake. Um, what what is it Manuel man, what is it culturally and in a in individual that I didn't know. reject uh, that commonly reject so violently rather than what is it contemplating or at least not it's fully rejecting but you know at least accepting it's, it as a possibility it's it's the frequency of vibration the difference between them and the effects of it and like the dissonancy and and then we have to destroy it or it threatens oneself changing. It threatens to change the, the identity of what you are right now. So that feels like that. Like they fight for your survival in a way. The intuition, great power comes to those who are willing to listen and to the whispers of the spirit instead of the shouts of this world. Follow the guidance provided by your intuition and walk through the doorway of abundance, peace, positivity, and compassion. Intuition does not explain, it simply points the way. Let's learn to listen and most importantly learn, trust your intuition. Can we talk about that with the we're using the seatbelt? Yeah. Um, yeah. You can't claim that you're driving, that you're driving with intuition. But yeah, you're going to put a seatbelt on in case your intuition's wrong. <laughs> and have you taken you too? <laughs> Into it now. The problem with intuition, intuition does not explain in a linear manner. No. No long explanations mm -hmm. laying it out so you can understand. It gives you deeper insights. 
and you must develop those insights. Intuition points in a direction. Intuition reveals the next step. Intuition reveals what is hidden and concealed. Intuition connects to the inward source, but does not explain to you in a long documented linear X, whatever you want to call it, what you should do or what you should believe or anything else. But that would, your mind, that would, fall, that would be memorizing. That's linear. Yeah. Purpose of sex and marriage I have. And I, on the meme it writes, you may leave, but that energy is tied out. Sex isn't just sex, don't let them tell you. You may leave, but the energy is tied to you. Well, you have sex with, and it remains connected to you. Well, the way you the aqua cords. Yes, but even more but like deeply. Aqua cords just way, touch way. It. There's deeper connections way, way. than that. Obviously. Hmm? If, if an aqua cord leaves a connection, a sexual interaction is. A... Yes, but those are, connections are important because how, how the husband and wife develop each other. Mm -hmm. Man, if forced to engage in sex, man has no choice but to engage in sex, most men of some sort. Would you agree with that? No choice. No choice. Mechanical. He can even have orgasms in his sleep. We're talking about sexual release of energy. Mm. I mean, he masturbates every chance he gets. Many young boys. Would you agree? There's a counterculture to that, but yeah. What's the counterculture? I mean, Dallas, seminal retention practices. Those and usually have flies all, but before that, before they try, they do. Yeah. No, you but have if you, what? They usually have still have sexual release before they decide to become a Dallas. Yeah. And then they they still usually have sex, don't they? They just don't release it. There's pros and cons to that trick. Yeah. yeah. But the thing is by law, like you can't tell you can't tell a, a man, a child don't have sex. It doesn't work. <laughs> they still do it a lot. Yes, they do, but it doesn't work. And that's the law, that's the divine law that makes it that way. Because unless you have no choice, then you have to engage to be engaging. And the quality of your engagement that you will grow. Why is abstinence preached so comprehensive? Why is Jesus God preached? You can raise the energy for a while using abstinence. There's people that still that uh, I'm mean, still get some sort of positive look, like their life has, has been made better because of uh, Jesus God. But like yes. abstinence, even statistically, scientifically, is supposed like way higher issues. Whatever you suppress from abstinence, whatever you suppress, atrophies. <clears throat> So have they overcome the sexuality or have they just made the sexual energy less? Well, and then they get issues with their uneducated. These are sort of the choices you have to make in life. That's why you live a multitude of lives. It's just strange that it's so common. Um, I suppose that would explain why. Right, so I wouldn't have to say, there's a matter of the animal nature. Yes. Not being raised up. Right. Way. An animal, doesn't, an animal doesn't find a partner to whatever and force himself. This is man's beastly nature. There's a lot of it around. Now, it's also remember when you're judging people, that sex, as long as it's not coerced or forced, is not a sin. Doesn't matter if you agree on it, doesn't matter who you have sex with or what you have sex with, as long as it's not forced or coerced. You're just squandering away the opportunity. 
Do you understand what I just said? Like you said before, judging it as a sin is a worse sin. You got it. You're on board. For you, it might be a sin. But that person is a multitude that as long as they're not beating somebody and raping somebody and doing whatever. And we'll get into that too. All right, the purpose of sex is to connect the two halves of the mind so they can interact, expand, and evolve. And that's in when you make the male and female one and the same, but the male not be male, the female female. How are you going to do that if you're separate? No, you can't do it separately. <laughs> so it takes intimate relationship in order to do this. Right. <laughs> Fact of life. But I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lustful intent has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So looking at a woman sexually is having some mental sex with them, and that's that is what the what the spiritual soul would not want to do. One more time, I missed that. What the spiritual soul would not want to do, yeah. like in going to strip shows and doing the rest of the thing. The lust, the yeah, this world intent. Yeah. Well, it's just it's in it's the thought, speech, and action, right? It doesn't have to come to the action, it still has a lot of the pieces of the puzzle. I mentioned, yeah, I mentioned here that the first thing that. So when, when you help somebody or when you, when the philosophers of those who have made, who have made the connection to, with the higher self. And the first thing the people, the madmen do is to kill them. Right. Where am I now? I don't think you did the last slide, did you? Yeah. I mean, we spoke this before. Let's see where we're going. Did I do the last one? This is the last one that we talked about, right? Uh, your true self is a 12 dimensional being of light, a pure consciousness and energy. Soul incarnates into this three dimensional realm of duality to grow its light and consciousness. All growth and development is brought about through the interaction and confrontation of opposites. That now, let's look at it male, female, heavenly, earthly, conservative, liberal. We say conservative, liberal, people in different walks of life is helping you grow as you interact with them. And that's important. So the idea is that. There's greater polarity in this country so between conservatism and, and liberalism, but it actually gives more people opportunity to go because the polarity the polls are stronger on the opposite side. Right? Appreciate Lincoln more now. No, no, <laughs> <laughs> he created more polarity. I agree with that. <laughs> we go back two slides. One more. One more. What's your thoughts on it? I'm just looking to, to learn more about it. Uh, there's a reason why you randomly feel confused, depressed. And, This the only way they will get evicted is if you plant. In other words, you stay connected to those people. So planting yourself of uh, so old connection. connections. Um, Except your wife. The same. Does anybody have cleansing techniques that they like? Yes, uh, they do. Like, yeah, I was, I was looking for a graph. No, it's whoever you have sex with me now have an intimate connection. They're a dependent of yours. Your energy will continue to go into them. Okay. 
as you would emit energy, they'll continue to receive it. They will be confused by your energy, and you will hit them as an anchor. It's like a, you can't, you can send them energy, but because they're not your wife, you can't receive it back. Fire bath, fire using water, you know. Yeah, to cleanse it's like, like tangibly. Um, it, it Alan, did you listen like, to what I just said? Channel, you can run energy like into a plane. 65, huh? Get it turned into water or whatever. I'd say it's the rivers a lot as well. Practical, practical cleansing, not just thinking about cleansing, tangibly running. Huge amounts of different energy through the body and putting it somewhere in a, in a practical way. Um, I mean, not like the daily, like in a daily meditation, like imagining just taking a, a fire bath through your, through your body, through your aura, through your mind, um, fire, water, whatever. And then, like, literally using the elements. Um, I find very tangible. Feel very aura, even like cast, casting stones. Like casting, casting your stones. Dad taught me. Um, mm -hmm. Taught me when I was really young. I still cast stones. Yeah, for, um, for the we'll do it a little while. How's that? Yeah. Yeah. You can have the floor. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I uh, guess it was. I think you finished last. Let's go to this one here. Just as part of Yom Kippur. It's a tradition of most. When the sun finally returns, the sun finally returns, and the power of the Father of the Sun. When the sun finally returns, to the Father's kingdom. Yeah. 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 The son of yours come. He who has devoured his life because of Hollis. Who is the Hollis? This world is the Hollis. This world is feminine in relation to spirit. Now suck up all the energy that the men, that the male has. And get them to use it and spread it into the world. This world, that's what I, exactly what I wrote. This world is feminine relation to the heavenly, portrayed as a whole. This world sucks up man's genital power. Man's genital power is his inheritance. Man is XY, male, female. Woman is XX, female, female. Growth and development is accomplished by channeling the gender of energy within the mind to bring about wholeness. That's the various things that you were portraying. Channeling within. Yeah, well, yeah. Divine marriage is when the divine, when the vital life force is channeled through the wife back into to the husband. Spiritual wife, we dwell in now. If you look at the picture, you see the relationship of man and woman. The man has a sense of power, but the woman, but the wife returns it. Her purpose is to return that energy back to them, which raises up the whole. We dwell in a mental womb. Now, here's going to be a different way of thinking yourself. At birth, male is meant, male, a male can be portrayed as mental sperm. A woman can be portrayed as a mental ovum. You understand what that is, right? That's why they're born male and female to come together and be one and grow. So this world, the mental, is a, a mental womb that, where you're supposed to be developing and growing mentally. And you do that through the interaction of male and female and all the opposite. All right.
that for exchange with random women represents the loss of life force, creating a spiritual void and loss. Once again, it's out in the world, we're losing. Most women lose most women lose spiritual energy into nature. But if you go into Gurja, what he was saying was that most people just really feed the moon. It's fed from the man into the woman and then into the environment. That's why. Go ahead. Just the transformation of the power. This world is living off your energy because it's a thing because it's feminine relationship. And it transforms energy, it transforms, it reverts, it transforms, it reverts. But unless it's transforming you, it's powering away your energy. You have to transform yourself instead of releasing it off into the world. Right? That's what all valid spiritual paths are all about. Whether it be the yogis, the mystics, the monks, or the followers of the gospel teaching. All the transformation of self. They have different methods, different ways of doing it. Yeah. The, uh, from studies, you mentioned valid path. That they, that they said it was that some things were a valid path, it was not as whole. Right. So I, I think in terms of effective and efficient. Well, Christianity is not a valid path. Neither is the file um, Judaism or Hinduism or the rest of them. It's all, not a path. Huh? It's not a path. At the core of each one of the religions were a valid path. But people are so down. Ritual. Yeah, they go they observe things out of work. So the ritual is not the religion, but people get confused with that being the religion. The religion is the ritual instead of the path. Religion becomes you go to church on that day. Not religion is all the time. <laughs> what does it mean say, <laughs> saying that? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. You were put into this world as man and woman to interact and to grow and evolve. If you do this consciously, it'll work. If you don't, you just become a, a victim of Plato's case. To a spiritual wife, sexual energy of her husband has great importance to fulfill her own spiritual role beyond organic consciousness. To this energy from the husband, she takes and she transforms it. Without the husband, she can't take that energy and transform it. To a spiritual husband, his wife's intuitive insight must be explored and developed are also important. In other words, most in the same way that, that when a man and a woman come together, the woman doesn't, has never developed. She has the potential to develop. But it's only by developing the woman. And the husband must do that open-mindedly. He must realize that he is thinking in this male linear mode. Now his wife has the ability to see what he can't see. And understand what he can't understand. And together they raise themselves up. There's an interesting thing here which your father can give you the, the link that I've written about extensively. It is the bonding of the husband and wife that enables the transformed wife and it to be returned to the husband at wife's breast. Just like you said in the picture on the previous slide. And this is how they develop. Now, here's another thing. Not only is men forced to have to engage in sex, we see in the world, but he's crazed by women's dress. Would you say that's true? So, huh? So are the women. Look on Facebook, breast first. 
this is where what's important is that they're both looking for the exchange of energy that comes out from back from the woman into the man innately. What does innately mean? Indirect. Well, you're driven. What did you say? It's unconscious. You're driven by by your instincts. In an instinct, this is what you want. You you desire this energy return and it can only come from one place. When you and the wife are one and you and she returns, she's able to return the energy back to you. That's why man is obsessed with human breasts and women are obsessed with their own breasts. But that's where the energy comes back in the circle that they form. Then he, I think it's interesting, like it's the nourishing, rich, like literally nourishing to the to the baby. That's a symbol. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Same like, as child, yeah. the symbol. And the psychiatrists, the psychologists say, "Oh, men just want to nurse." That's a lot of bullshit. That's the misinterpretation of what the, they're not. They're not aware of. Of the what subtle, reality is, the subtle world, even. No, they're not. Young is probably one of the more enlightened ones. I would say that. Now, in here, I got, I got two interesting memes. The spiritual wife preserves her energy. She does not try to show herself off as a sexual image. Why? She's she has a husband's energy. She does not want to give it off. Through the bisexual imagery that she's projecting. Charlie Chaplin said that? Yes. That's what he told his daughter. Charlie Chaplin grew in wisdom as we got over. You find it interesting? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen a quote by Charlie Chaplin. <laughs> Why don't you go put that back in the kitchen? I yeah, tap into all the yeah. in my computer. My all my computer. Oh, I, I sent him to put the grace back. Sex is back. sacred and should be, should, have, should be shared with authentic purity of both parts. Sexual energy is intense and can heal the universe with a vibration. And the two people get together and share their souls together. DNA is exchanged during sex. You imprint yourself on another. My will sex is important. Oh, the laws. You're making the woman part of you, and you part of the woman. Again, this is quoting the when you make the two one. I think it basically covered this in discussion. All right, this is important. Elaine Pagel writes in her book <coughs> on <coughs> simultaneously, simultaneously, the Gospel of Philip celebrates Mary Magdalene as manifesting the divine spirit, which the Gospel calls the virgin who came down from heaven. When Christians spoke of Jesus, born of a virgin, this author agreed. But refuses, she's talking about the gospel of Philip. So refuses to take it literally. So some people, he says, take this literally to mean that Jesus' mother became pregnant apart from any man, apart from sexual intercourse. But this, he says, is a face of fools who fail to comprehend spiritual matters. Instead, continues the Gospel of Philip, Jesus was born physically, just as all humans, as the son of a biological parent. The difference, says the author of this Gospel, was that he was born again. In baptism, born spiritually, to become the son of the Father of God and Heavenly Mother. 
this is what each person has to do for the next stage of birth. Was it in this verse? Verse? Is no. Second verse. Right. Right. But they don't understand this. Now, I write: the virgin is an allegorical portrayal of the purified feminine intuitive spheres of mind, but the opposite, the male linear spheres of mind. Now, in this, Peter as representing the male linear spheres of mind, and Mary Magdalene. All right, in the in the in the in the book, she writes that. When it writes, these are strange ideas, Peter is saying that of Mary because the mind of the male linear cannot always understand feminine intuitive. You feel misunderstood by men? All right, and this is this is this is played out in, in, in another book. This is played out in another book by Jesus and the first she wrote a book, Jesus and the First Female Apostle, named Mary Magdalene. And in this in this book, in this account, dissension rises amongst the disciples. All the disciples except Mary have failed to comprehend the Savior's teaching. Mary steps in and confronts them, and Peter rejects teaching unknown to them that she received from the Savior in a vision. The vision represents an intuitive versus literal teaching. The Savior had explained to her the nature of prophecy and the rise of the soul to its final rest, describing how to win the battle against the wicked. Illegitimate powers that seek to keep the soul entrapped in this world, ignorant of its true spiritual reality. This is where the intuitive and the, the male will always reject it because he's stuck on what he sees, literally. And they'll reject what the intuitive mind says. In this book, Peter and Mary are both the same person. This is what's going on within your own mind. All right, Richard? Your linear sense, which is stuck in this world, is rejecting the Mary part of you within your mind. So what? All right, in this case, Peter and Mary are not historical. They represent male linear, feminine, intuitive paths of the same mind. Remember, because they interpret it as a history book, they don't understand what's being presented there. It's not a history book. It's spoken about within your own mind in the scripture. Well, even if, if they're husband and wife, then it's not. It's also not. It's if nice. they don't listen to each other and build upon each other, the husband and wife become connected. And the husband has to explore the wife, and the wife has to explore the husband to evolve and grow up. Would you not say that a husband and wife in, in this world are also not to the one life? They're trying, they're, they're supposed to be, but that if you're just living a, a typical marriage like today, you're not. You're squandering away your energy and opportunity. But we grow through lives of defeat, don't we? As what's his name says. We learn from our mistakes. There's, there's the, yes. Yeah. Now, all in the past, we were on the whole church and everything was on strict superstition. This is the first time that people have been free to be themselves, and mainly in this country. Well, without being burned and slaughtered. And <laughs> yes. Remember the town where they killed all the women and didn't have one town? That I told you about. I burnt them all as witches. So the town lasted another thirty years. And then... I guess they had to import more women, kids, or whatever. <laughs> well, that, that, they, didn't, they didn't kill that many, but they they tried to. 
This was in, I just saw this was, was in Germany or something during, oh. during the Middle Ages. Okay, the, but in, in America, the Salem the, witch the trials, Salem witch, oh. that yeah. was only six or seven people. Oh, okay. That was a very small number. <coughs> not like the, not like what they did in Europe. Okay. Yeah. The cats and killed the men. Yeah. I think the great example of um, the idea of uh, Peter and it's like sort of aggression, aggression and um, the feminine is the Actually, you're putting the man, you're putting the male lineage to sleep when you're, or into su you're suspending the male lineage to regress them. Yeah, but when you come out of it, it's like, you know, you question, know, you know, you know, question you know, you know. was this real? Or did I just yeah. imagine? Did you get that from Manuel? Yeah, yeah. When you regress somebody, you're actually calming down the linear mind. Yeah. And you're activating the, you're allowing the feminine intuitive to speak. But when the person awakens, so the male lineal will automatically try to discount what the intuitive says just to maintain control. Yes. Did I actually experience that? Is that real? Yes, I can. Since you're learning to do these things, you understand what I just said? Yeah, it's uh, it makes a bit more sense than before when I was unable to do it or was unsuccessful, I should say. Yeah, you want to go back? Both. All right, we're how far back from it? I got like the Peter Mary quote. This one? The bottom one. The bottom one? The Savior had explained to her. Oh. You understand what that's saying? What's your thoughts? Well, I don't think I don't think I've read the, the story. You didn't read any Gnostic Gospels. That's from a book. They were writing about it's called Jesus and the First Female Apostle by Karen Kent. They, they tried to say that Mary was a separate, was a woman, and she could only she could understand what the Savior was saying, what the men couldn't. But what she was doing, she was reading the the Gospel carnal. The male, the linear of the male is representative of the male linear skiers of mind, and Mary is representative of the intuitive skiers of mind. And the linear will always try to shut down the, the intuitive. So if you're looking at opening opening up the intuitive, if it gets traumatized like that, it's not invited to open up more and more. Right. It closes down. That's atrophies. Yeah. Same thing as same thing as a wife does when you tell her when you as a husband tell her she doesn't know what you're talking about. You've done whatever. So these are personifications. You got a lot of brutal men out of that. Right? You got it? All right. They use the word personification. All right. Throwing me off. This is this Dean of actually made for me during one of our talks together. And it shows the 12 within the 12. And now you can take that down a couple more levels the 12 within the 12 within the 12. And that's how you get to 144,000 personnel. So um, if you're doing the, the math, 12 times 12 and 10 times 10 times 10. Whatever it is. It's probably more of a symbol. Yeah. All right. This quotation is important for the person who's judging others. 
that servant which knew his Lord's will, and prepared not himself, neither did according to his will, who shall be beaten with many stripes. But he that did not know, know not, and did not commit things worthy of stripes, for he, and he did commit. In other words, what he's saying here is that the so low level sinner is not committing a sin. And the more you learn, the more is expected of you. So what's a sin for one person is not necessarily a sin for another person. So when we see, when we tell, when we imitate the other people, we're often taking ourselves down because we know right from wrong. But and we follow the the crowd, taking us ourselves down. Now, what this would also say from a Christian perspective is that the sinners will get to heaven before them. It's kind of what uh, kind of what kind of what? was saying when the Pharisees accused him of sitting at the table with the, the tax collectors and sinners, right? <laughs> So what is the fate of those who did commit things worthy of stripes, but they shall clearly receive less stripes or judgment than those who knew them as his will, but did not properly prepare themselves? The more you evolve, if you go back to doing what the other people are doing, then you're, you'll have greater judgment than those who just abandon everything and live a carnal lifestyle. Just like the out of the law of Octus, if anyone would come after him, must deny himself and take of his own cross. Jesus did not say that you must believe that he was crucified. It means you must go through the transformation in yourself. Now, uh, since we know that there was also in historically 16 crucified saviors, they all weren't physically trans crucified. Now the symbol of the crucifixion is a symbol, meaning your own transformation. Tap the cross. You want to continue this later or should we finish it or what? Not too much. We should try to finish it. All right. I think Andrew was getting sleepy. The Catholic cross, the church killed all the Catholics. I'll put them down as heretics. But that cross there is a cross, it is a symbol of the cross you must bear, where you must take the three upper. We, the, your, your sphere of the mind is four paradoxical opposites, or four trinities. And what that's showing you is the four trinities all in harmony in one. And you must bring them all together in the center. There's the, what we use. Development of mind. Know thyself. Male positive frequency opposite female nature. We've gone over this a number of times. Everything is frequency and color, sound and so on. Let's go back to that. The last one? Yeah, I was thinking for a response for that. <laughs> we they show high things. Things. For all the, the uh, comments about vibration being all the time, but there's density of frequency. What? What's your thoughts? Well, it just I was going through the Wikipedia. It's like there's you know different patterns you can see in nature that are space based, not time based. So that's an example of it's uh, space based density. Yeah, there's a persistent, <clears throat> it's just a, it's a vibration was a persisting through time. Well, there's a, there's a uh, debate on the forum, call it debate, but there's some contention over term vibration. 
uh, specifically with a frequency and that frequency can only be time bound. So that's it, no. Here's a perfect example of the density is a, you know, as a frequency. Mm -hmm. uh, and then you just look on the Wikipedia, there's also other examples of uh, uh, space dimension for frequency. For frequency. For the one thing about density is frequency, the universe becomes a symphony. And if you wish to understand the universe, think of energy, frequency, and vibration, which is what we call the Tesla. And of course, one of my favorite quotations by uh, you have the belief that you can do it. Uh, if I have the belief that I can do it, I shall surely acquire the capacity to do it if I may not have it at the beginning. So you, that positive image that you believe and have faith that you can become, becomes your destiny and you can accomplish it. Is what it's saying. Great. You like that one? You know, so that's the same as people that talk about manifesting. To come to you, to so come to you in order to achieve some of the program. So, so you can apply it to, to your life, I suppose, in the case or to your life. In order to become, your, become your true self, you must un believe that you can become your true self. If you're just living your life believing in the Jesus God, then you're flatlined. But then you don't have to do anything. But people use this in a physical way um, in in the world, um, in the cave. I mean, you know, there's a lot of talk about manifesting and so on. That people use that law in, in this cave. Well, that sounds to, about to so, so low. Or whatever. In the cave. It's a, yeah, it's a law as above. Yes. Now, the law of attraction. People talk about that all the time now, and people use it, and uh, you know, in in their yeah, in their life in this cave, like to attract wealth or to attract a partner, whatever it might be. So like if it's not it's genuine just, and useful, then they don't. It doesn't work. No, it, it works. If if they can steward whatever they manifest well for. Not really. No, I was talking to, to my children about that. Yeah. I was talking to my children like about that. Like you can, you can attract whatever you want, right? But you will do that. But once you have it, it could be beneficial. It could be to your detriment. You know? So you will attract that thing. Whichever, but once you get it, do you get, is it to your benefit or is it to your detriment spiritually? You know, you might think physically it's to your benefit, like more money or whatever, yeah. but spiritually it might be to your detriment. But you can definitely do it because it's just a force. Yeah. You can use it. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it's the same thing like it <laughs> says there <laughs> your beliefs become your limitations. I think it's the same thing like in scripture oh, oh, and it's 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 how God causes it to shine on the dark behind it. You engage in a law and you'll find it. Onion juice run around. Here's one I stuck in that academia program tomorrow. <laughs> like that one? I agree with that. 
That's how I did. Yeah, that's that's how always, yeah, that was my principal when I went to school. Yeah. <laughs> Anything that was memorizing. I've always seen it as a great point. What? I've always seen it as a great point. What? I've always seen it as a great point. That's about all I got. Yeah, we're finished. Yeah, we're about finished. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's a really, it's a, a painting. Painting. Oh. Painting. Oh. painting. People really, really, really so that 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 I have a DVD with the campfire. <laughs> um, do you want me to, to pause or stop the recording? Okay. All right, we're going to stop the recording.